Hey, it's Azriel Lawless. And once again, you've taken the elevator straight into Hella Vela and found yourself another Lawless interview with a wonderful Vela author out there, a young man named AJ Humphreys is with us today. Say hi, AJ. Well, hey there, Vellans. How we doing? <laughs> I like your hat. What's that? I, is Sue the Dinosaur from the Chicago Field Museum. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I like that. So how are you doing this morning? I see you've got your coffee. I've got my root beer. Oh, Barks can't go, can't go wrong with the Barks. Yeah, I know beer. it. I told my husband about this. I'm like, you got to like fight people for diet <laughs> Barks around here. You never find it on the shelf. You know, you got to knock people down to get it, but it's worth it. It's worth yeah. it. No, you know? Nothing competes. So yeah. the just leave them there squirming on the floor and go check out. You'll be happy. Anyway, <laughs> well, on this fine, fine, fine Monday, uh, you are in for a lawless interview, which there's only, there's the first question I ask everybody, and here it comes. I'm going to lob it at you, coming okay. at you. When did you first get started writing? And you're such a young man. I've got to, I can't wait to hear this answer. So uh, I'm 28 and. Oh, well, I, thank you. Yeah. Um, when I started writing, it was. God, it was probably around like second, third grade. And the first story I had ever written was about an astronaut getting sucked away to a parallel uh, world and uh, fighting an alien squirrel. And I wanted to submit it for this contest. And my teacher told me it was too dark. And I was like seven. <laughs> like, okay. An alien squirrel. I'm still on the alien squirrel. Who won if he had to fight the alien squirrel? Now, he had to win because you grew up on video games, yeah? No, he didn't win. <laughs> Kid got smoked by the squirrel at seven? Yeah, it, I, that, that's why I had to rewrite it if I wanted to do the contest. See, now, I don't agree with that teacher. I think she should have just been let go. I think she should just let the kid go. Yeah, I, I always got in trouble back in like the first grade school days, you know, you're not allowed to draw skeletons or you're not allowed to draw zombies with blood. And sure enough, like Halloween's coming around or whatever. And I'm just drawing everything they told me I couldn't. So yeah, never, never had things on the walls in the classroom. My husband's an artist. If they'd have told him that in school, he would have never been one because that's, that's his, that's his jam, man. That's his jam. To this day, that's his jam. So, so anyway, anyway, so you got started, you wrote your story. Did you rewrite the story and then you could go ahead and enter the content? I, I want to, no, I definitely did rewrite it. I did enter it. I know I didn't win. And then it was a couple years later, they start like in fourth grade, they started putting us in different tracks. Um, and I wanted to be on the writing track and they put me in math because I wasn't good at math. And I was like, well, I don't want to be good at math. Put me on the writing track because I want to write. And um, after that, we, I, kept, I moved and then I kind of just fell away from it. Um, got into journalism for a while. Um, and then very recently, um, over the past two, three years, um, I've, I've been earnest about my writing and actually like trying to finish projects. Um, but now, I, how, did, I, how did COVID affect you, young? I'm going to call you young because I'm a thousand years old. Like, I, soon. we've already talked about this. That's okay. The gray hairs on top of my head will really appreciate that. Um, so COVID was, COVID was interesting um, because I was in healthcare at the time. So I already had a crazy schedule, but now I had a crazy schedule where I was commuting more and doing more working from home. 
So I found myself with like more time in front of my computer to right, right. To, to like right, write. right. Yeah. And so I really got into this one story that um, I actually just got an editorial assessment on and um, looking to self-publish it before the end of the year. Um, thought about putting it through Vela, but it just, it doesn't lend itself to the serial format. And I, I want to be true to the story. Um, but I ended up actually quitting my job back in December because I was just so burnt out. I'm like, the only thing that is like waking me up is my like family and writing and working 60 hours a week on a salary. You know, like I wasn't getting extra compensation. I wasn't, um, I just felt <laughs> took, took it, taken advantage of, so. Well, you were definitely being taken advantage of, Sam. Okay, yeah. So, so you are currently on a hiatus from getting your ass kicked on a regular basis. Yeah. So now I I uh, I bar back part time just to make sure I've got some money coming in and I'm not you paying do? my. What? <laughs> you do what? I bar back. So I. What does that mean? Uh. I'm that schmuck behind the bartender who's polishing the glasses and do, doing all the dishes and junk like that. Oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. I had no idea. See where I'm from, they better be able to do it all. Well, it, they do it at fine dining establishments. I so. see, I see. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, down South, everybody, nobody's worried about you getting you know, if you can't find the napkins and shit on your own, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, I mean, there's also a place where it's 50 bucks for a glass of whiskey. So, if, so this is one of those places where they bring you that little, that whiskey sampler thing. Yeah, we it's got a mere $200 for a dram of these eight wikis. <laughs> Here you yep. go. Everything's got to be upsold. We there are signs in the back, everywhere, upsell. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you bar back for uh, some bucks, and that's mm -hmm. good. And you use that to kind of augment, supplement your writing. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so we're going to talk some more about your writing. I want to say this though. Do you know? Uh, I don't know what uh, genre you primarily read in, but you are reminding me of one of my very favorite authors. One of my very favorite all round authors, even though he, he writes YA. Okay. Primarily. His name is Jonathan Stroud. Jonathan Stroud. The name sounds familiar, but I couldn't. Like I you got started in about second, second, third grade. And I think you would very much like him. I think that, uh, yeah, you remind me of him. Your, um, your sort of swerve does. <laughs> and I think, uh, yeah, and his uh, claim to fame, what he's, and I am just, <gasps> boy, I'm, I'm his his claim to fame is the Bartimaeus trilogy. Yes, I, I just pulled him up. I read some of these when I was a kid. Okay. And uh, he started when he was a kid and wrote a little, like a, con uh, oh God, what are they called? What are they called? Uh, 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 when they're, when they're graphic novel. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, when he was a kid and glued a graphic novel together, mm -hmm. you know, as a little kid. That's and, so cool. um, yeah, and brilliant. God, he's brilliant. And what I, what burns my bacon is that Disney has purchased the Bartimaeus trilogies and they're sitting on them. Of course. Now, would that not be a hit and a half? My God almighty, you'd have people everywhere wearing mm. Bartimaeus shirts it would be Bartimaeus everything because he was cool if you remember from being a kid he yeah. was cool I mean the moment I saw these covers like nostalgia goosebumps just like have enveloped my arm yeah yeah 
And if you listen to the um, the audio books, mm-hmm. I'll buy. I'll be goddamn. They got Jonathan. I'm sorry, sorry, Simon Jones to read these audio books. Now he is from. Uh, oh my God, he's he's British and he's a voice actor and he's incredible. And I, he's been on television, you know, I'm trying to think. Yes, he's okay. Read science theater, all kinds of stuff. He's been on all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And he reads these and they are, man, put your family in front of the, you know, whatever you're playing it on. And it'll entertain everybody there. Yes. Oh my God, he did Monty Python. Yes, yeah, so, so he's yeah he's big, big name. To, mm-hmm. that did did the voice acting on this and like i said it's fun for the whole family and there's four of these and they're outrageous mm-hmm. and uh, you just remind me of him you just remind me of him for some reason and that's a big compliment because he's one of my very favorite authors ah, thank you i appreciate it yes 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 indeed um so then you found at some point you had to find Vela. So how did you find it? When did you find it? And what did you first upload? Which I know what that is. Yeah. So I, I was actually on TikTok and I saw just, yeah, I saw someone scrolling through and someone had posted a little like hype trailer for their Vela. I was like, this sounds super interesting. What is Vela? And they like told me, it's like, oh, it's this new Kindle thing. It's serialized fiction. And I had been writing a serial fiction, which at the time I called Vespids. And I, I had, I thought about putting it on Wattpad, but I just couldn't, Wattpad was too much. All the like interaction you have to do. I, I just- Crazy. Yeah, um, it, 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 it felt like I couldn't focus on the writing. I had to focus on the like networking side of it. And I love networking with the other authors yeah, and the no readers, sure. but it, it was too much. So I was just kind of <laughs> sitting on it and I had maybe six, seven chapters written at this point. And so I just said, you know what, let's, uh, Let's just pull the trigger. I, I thought about it for maybe 24 hours. I'm like, what if anything is the downside here? And so I when was this? When was this? Back in, I want to say January, December, somewhere in there is right really? after I left my job. So um, right after you quit your job. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think that was kind of one of the the win-wins for me was like, I got no money coming in. So even if it's just pennies on the dollar, that's more than what I've got right now. And I mean, I've discovered a community that is vibrant and thriving and I just absolutely love it. And so since then i've it's kind of held me accountable to producing what i now call season of the monster nice. and um it was actually really funny i was editing a chapter and it was a line of dialogue from one of my favorite characters samuel clemens who i of course had to name for the great mark twain um and he is just this like kind of old persnickety just jack of all trades master of none and he said we're gonna you know what summer's almost here and we're gonna have to prepare for the season of the monster and i i was reading that line i'm like that's what this book should be called and so i just uh, switched it from Vespids to Season of the Monster and uploaded it to Kindle Vela and um, got that now first, the first season's done. You got that first bonus. What did you do? How was your face? What was your face when you saw your first bonus? I was 
I was ecstatic because I I celebrated my first dollar on Kindle Vela. And I mean, I was like telling everyone, I was like, I made a dollar off my writing. Like I am a legit author now. And then I got my bonus and I was like, wait, what? If this is, this went beyond like a funny, like I just a little side hustle thing that's bringing me joy to like, yeah. wait, I can, I can make something of this as long as they're giving this bonus out. I can, I can make something of it. And I got to get a bigger broom and get my cut. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with only one cereal out, uh, my second bonus paid my car payment, which was real nice. And you're just like, holy shit, snakes. Where can I get? What did I write in my, let me just go through all my old papers from when I was a kid. Here's one in crayon. I'm going to go ahead and type that sucker in. I like it. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it had me going there just looking for anything. Um, God, it is. It's been so fun to be, to just see all this like creativity coming out and all the different writers taking part from, um, just like little short stories to these big epics that. Yeah, you know, you got me. the freaking thorn birds on, on Kindle Villa and it's like a hundred and some odd episodes or whatever. And uh, oh my God, it, it and it just goes on and on. Well, you know, the Asian serials, people tell me, now I haven't seen it with my own eyeballs, all right, but they yeah. tell me that some of those get on up into the thousands of episodes. Yeah, yeah. I I believe it, um, especially with like what I I'm familiar with as far as like Japanese culture and the way that they just absorb manga, and that is you know that is perfect serial fiction, and it's even harder because those artists have to draw so much, but they they really thrive on these character driven stories that come out week after week and um i know yeah, it's, it's affecting their their street fashion it's mm -hmm. it's it's informing their street fashion and i'm sure a host of other things yeah and i mean there's there's shows like i remember you know seeing leg at night on like toonami uh that i had to sneak out and see um that are still running and i mean they're they're yeah there are thousands of episodes there not to mention all the content it's based on which good grief they, yeah i i i asked on uh tiktok one day would you rather have to write um a hundred stories from one universe and it all has to be contained to the same universe or a hundred stories independent of one another and for me like i i have to write a hundred stories like independent because like niching me down to one universe would be yeah. way too hard yeah i think that it would be i don't i don't confine myself to earth mm -hmm. i don't i don't write science fiction i just don't confine myself to to the reality we live in. Yeah. I don't see the point of that. Okay, let's talk about Season of the Monster. Let's talk about sure. that. What is it about? So Season of the Monster is, it's always so hard to explain my own stories, but- Too bad, Season of, try. Right? Season of the Monster is the story of Gini Freeman, whose daughter goes missing and like any mother would doesn't matter she's gonna keep looking she's gonna keep searching but six months go by with no leads whatsoever and then one day the detective assigned to her case reaches out and says i have this really interesting cctv footage you need to see and she sees a doppelganger of herself, 20 years her junior. So she's 40 something, 
a 20 year old version of herself on CCTV footage wearing her daughter's pajamas. And it then is this mystery of what's going on here. But I wanted to also tell the story of the monsters. And I was inspired by Salem's Lot in the way King writes this town that kind of behind closed doors at night is taken over by vampires. Sorry, spoiler warning, should have said that. But in, it's not so much about the town being taken over at night. It's more about the way you can watch these monsters grow their colony in the daytime and that they can walk around amongst us in the daytime. Woo! And that, that was the big impetus for Season of the Monster was That's I wanted to write and yeah, I wanted to write a new monster story because you know, we're all told to be afraid of, you know, check your closet, look under your bed before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But what if the person right next to you could turn you into a monster when you're sitting on the bus in broad freaking daylight. daylight yeah yeah well that's that's awesome that adds yeah definitely an an, an additional layer of horror and an allegory to basically what's going on all the time mm -hmm. yeah. and monsters yeah. are just hide in the dark yeah they're they're right there walking amongst us and it, it really, it gave me, and that's kind of what I love about this story is it gives me these two avenues to explore these monsters and create a brand new mythos. Yeah. But it's then at this, yeah. And then at the same time to have, explore this kind of contemporary mystery. Yeah. And that can be so grounded in reality of loss and trauma and communities coming together across certain lines. Yeah. And, and you've got it, you've got that that magical realism because you've got the 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 parana paranormal, supernatural rubbing up against the everyday. Mm -hmm. you know that let's solve where this child is gone and yeah the two are coming together so that's creating magical realism yep and that's kind of where so season one spring and then season two coming out next month summer so, will um season really kind of explored the denial the denial when all these voices kind of start coming out of the woodwork saying Mo monsters are real and just being like no like I, I my daughter's gone how are you going to tell me that like monsters took her that's not that's not the case but kind of you you have to gain a little bit of acceptance to be able then to say all right how do we how do we destroy these things and I also like the idea of monsters having sentience and not just oh my being, God. yes, of course, like not just being, you know, a zombie. And no, or, no, I wouldn't assume so. Mm -hmm. Something that could move around in the daylight and prey on you during the daylight, I would assume would have its own sentience and its own agenda. Yeah. But it, there's, There's a sense that like not everyone is on the same page on the monster side either. And I think that's kind of is the frightening bit that even they don't know who to trust. And it's things are gonna pick up. And I've been loving writing this next season because it is it's faster it's grittier it's so i see that season one's complete how many episodes to completion of season one 
25. And then I tacked on a uh, little sneak peek of the first chapter for 26, or chapter 26 is a sneak peek of the first chapter for summer. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Season of the Monster, and I know that you've got a new one out there too. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that is Fine Dying, which um, I actually thought of while I was at work one day. And, oh my God. <laughs> and I, I love whodunits. I like, there's just something about a whodunit that engrosses me as a reader. And I recently was re reading um, Lucy Foley's um, The Guest List. And I, I'm, I'm sorry to Lucy Foley fans, but it really disappointed me as far as like a whodunit. And I go back to, I think Ryan jo Johnson's Knives Out is one of the best modern takes on a whodunit because you get, you, you get the reveal so early on. Right. But then there's still this mystery left to be found. Right. And that's, so my experience working in this restaurant and this idea of like what I believe a whodunit should be came together one day and I had to sneak off to the bathroom and start writing it on my phone. Nice. And it, the one thing that I, I thought fully did really well in the guest list that is, it has inspired me a bit is to really try and tackle multi POV from a broad standpoint. And wait a so, minute, now you, you're going multi POV. Yeah. So every, every chapter is a different, a different person's experience as they move throughout the. the but you're, okay. So you're just using first point person point of view. I, it's a, I'm using third person, um, but I'm following a different per. It's more of a third person limited um, okay, than okay. omniscient. Okay. Um, because I, I, I think there's something, there's something to be said that while we can't connect with like a protagonist always, when you're following multiple different people, there might be a character you identify with more than I would. And I wanna give the reader that chance to like identify with a different character and best themselves in that character and come back to that person's story over and over again. Yeah. Now there's so, lots of these out there written in the first person. I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of them out there yeah and but not i haven't seen a lot of them out there giving you multiple limited third person povs i have not seen that yeah and i just thought that was well that's nice yeah and mm -hmm. it's, a, so, it's a little more detaching yeah so fine dying well personally i find third person a little more freeing i know it sounds like it should be detaching but it's it actually, uh, oh, I was talking to somebody. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Having a, uh, it was during a meeting with an editor a couple of mm -hmm. days ago. Uh, it was something that Cinder, Kendra Griffin set up. Mm -hmm. You could sign up for it. And she just had a professional editor up there talking to people and ask, answer questions. And they were talking about third person POV. Now that was her preference mm -hmm. uh, as an editor. And um, she said it better than I've heard it said and that's it's exactly I agreed with it completely first person you have to kind of buy in that you're that person the whole time yeah to buy into it you know and you got to mm -hmm. say if you're relating to it everything that character does has to be relatable to you mm -hmm. or else you're out of the story so third person allows you to pick and choose those traits that yeah you to relate to without having them like ground into your face yeah, and yeah. I think that's what I mean more by the like detachment. Detachment, yeah. Yeah, is like 
but that there are certain stories I think you have to tell from a first person yes, standpoint. Yes, yes, and a lot of romance has gone that way for obvi reasons. Obvi, mm-hmm. obvi, obvi, right? Yeah. You wanna you wanna kind of like live through that person's eyes. You wanna experience things. Right. But when you're telling things where people are dismembered or you know, suddenly some good person that this person, the the reader has been reading about goes all bad, breaks bad, and there you go. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I mean, you're kind of out there. But uh, anyway, yeah, so third person limited, that sounds great. Um, I was just getting behind you there is all I was doing. Oh, no, I, I, sorry, I love talking. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's the way to go. You know, I think that's the way to go. Um, Especially when you're, when you're doing the multiple viewpoints i think that's mm-hmm. great and i'm i'm gonna i'm looking forward to seeing it now it sounds like there's food involved what how did you how are you can how many episodes do you have up first of all um so there's four up now um and food play plays an interesting little role because it's a it's a a trapped space sort of situation. They're all stuck there within a blizzard and uh, a blizzard in uh, central Missouri, which uh, is a blizzard. Yeah. And central Missouri is a place that gambles every year that there will not be a blizzard. So when one comes, they're never prepared. And it's a perfect setting for this where literally five blocks away from the the precinct of a police department the police wouldn't be able to make it there and oh and i've got some extenuating circumstances that will make sure they can't make it there i see i see okay good good but good i'm liking it it's got the uh what is it what is it um kind of that trapped space feeling so if you can't leave and you know someone here is a murderer who do you trust? How do you go about surviving, staying alive? And sounds, sounds like The Shining a little bit. Yeah, I, I would. I hadn't even thought of that, but all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> yeah, creepers, man. All right. Yeah, but all the, right. the, the fine dining. Ass, yeah, the food aspect is going to be interesting because they have access to all this food and they have access to a kitchen and I, I don't want to give too much away on what oh, I Oh, don't, am. don't, don't. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated. It sounds great. Fine Dying, everybody, by A.J. Humphreys. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to good things. Mm-hmm. So, A.J., tell me now, all this writing you've been doing, and uh, you've been doing any reading of Vela's? Yes. And so narrow, I, I've tried to narrow it down to the three that I keep coming back to. Okay. And right now, the top of my Vela reading list is Dyrus by L.J. Vitanza. I mean, it is, it's so... It's so well written, and the characters have have some depth to them. But just the way the way she writes the these creatures is I, I just love it. It's ominous, and it makes me want to click next episode. Let's keep reading. The length is the perfect length. Um, I gotta have her on the show. I don't think I've had her on the show. Oh, I would. I would highly recommend it. I'll, no, I'm, I'm going to go after her. I'm in a group chat or two with her, so I can uh, I can try and put a bug in her ear. Yeah, yeah. Are you um, on Discord or something? Uh, no, I have um, recently with Des Sweet and Tasha Creed um, taking on a role with their Story Stash group on Facebook. Oh. So um we're we're still trying to kind of iron out what everyone's roles are but it's really just you know promote one another's work 
and highlight the community and not let um trolls in yeah. yeah so she made you like a mod yeah essentially um yeah, yeah. and i know um oh my god gage and gage greenwood and naomi Ult have a um discord server that i'm trying i am trying to get on so um hopefully i'll be a little more involved with that one but yeah i've seen i i haven't gotten on discord myself yet yeah and i don't uh, i can't do it all yeah i mean it is i can't it's a balancing it act between yeah, like too much yeah and i mean i can only imagine with this the web show here that editing and interviewing and trying to make sure you know something about your guests cannot be uh it takes time a short process yeah. it takes time it takes time but one of the things about the lawless interviews and why i went ahead and used the name on it is uh whatever we say here that's mm -hmm. what goes up yeah that's touch cool it. i don't touch it oh. and uh because i i don't want not to not only do i not want the overhead of the time it would take mm -hmm. to go in and edit this thing mm -hmm. i do not want people to wonder which of their words made it in mm. and how like they came across yeah like, where did i chop it how did i make that look you know where what what and um so no i don't touch it and uh, love it yeah so you can count on it being exactly what you said here so. <laughs> great so the only person who's gaslighting me is me i love that's it. right that's <laughs> right and it was funny because i was doing an interview the other day and somebody said well I'll, I'll keep i'll keep my language clean you know so that you can monetize this video and i'm like fuckity fuck man i ain't worried about monetizing this video <laughs> I just I, want people to to sit and watch them, be entertained, be drawn into the authors that they're learning about because you guys are all new voices. These are, yeah, you know, this is mm -hmm. this is something new that's risen to the foreground and is now all these new voices are available for, you know, wow, let's read. Let's read some of these guys. These are brand yes. new folks. This is not. This ain't your grandma's, you know, mm -hmm. reading book. This is uh, brand new. Yes. And that's the thing I love about Bellas is these are these are people who have said, I'm getting my story out there and I'm getting it out now. And it's not being hampered by comp titles and query letters and all these things that make you niche down into a a bubble that the industry says like you should be in right we're all here saying like i haven't i have a unique story i have something new and it doesn't have necessarily a comp title from the last three years and right i mean like the the feature uh length novel that i will hopefully be releasing this summer I, if i have to comp it to anything it's a paranormal fear and loathing in Las Vegas set in the Wisconsin wilderness. Like, oh my God. Like, it's not like, and that was the whole point. I wanted to write something a little more unique. And every time I tried to pitch that, um, people were like, well, people don't really know fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Okay, well, you wanted a comp title, okay? <laughs> um, but I want to get back to the Velas because. I have two others that I think um, are just stupendous. All right, let's go. Dark by Tirza Hawkins. What is dark? Dark. 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 It is. I, it just is a creepy, eerie, atmospheric horror that I am all for. And, and my favorite part about it is this kind of takes the zombie type end of the world like trying to survive and has this great idea of let's live on a plane 
and fly around, land, gas up, and get back into the air. How could the creatures get us if we're <laughs> flying around? And I mean, at some point, you know, the, the creatures gotta gotta figure out a way to to get to them, and they're gonna have to adapt. The the humans are so it's it's good. And yeah, then Tizzy, are you listening? Tears of this is another <laughs> one for you. <laughs> yeah tizzy um i she's one of my friends out here she's actually an admin out on hella Vella. yeah and she does the looking around for the she does the troll hunting mm -hmm. she, uh, yeah she knows as is gonna accidentally let him get through so she does the troll hunting and she's she's great at it and she's a great person and uh she can really bring Mm -hmm. the creepy ass horror the creepy and creepy ass horror what did i do with my copy of tizzy's book damn it oh it do you, spider sight oh yes that's awesome i yeah. i need to get me a copy i um money money's tight right now so most no of my, yeah no 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 you've got to follow your dream yeah, so forget it you don't need a copy you know i I do invest in tokens and I yes. spend my two bucks every couple of you don't couple freaking of days need and... a copy and you know uh you need to you need to focus and you need to do well. So what's number three? Number three is one I just picked up and more just because I kept seeing it over and over again. It's been on the top 250. It doesn't need me to plug it. But I think it's so well written. And that's Beechwood by Kel oh. Frillman. And Beechwood by Kel? Yeah. I Kel, mean, listen, here's Beechwood again. God damn it. It, it <laughs> she is such a good writer. I mean Kel can write her freaking face off. Yes. And I the only caveat I'll say is. The episodes run a little long for serial fiction, but it's freaking worth it every time. Every, every single time I get through one of these, I just like, fuck, what is she gonna do? Like, what is she creating here? What is happening? And I just wanna read more. I just wanna know. And I mean, th those three, I think are, are some of the best that the platform's offering right now, but I, I could steal another hour of your show talking about plenty of Vela's. So I, I'll <laughs> limit it to those two. We're three. already gonna have one on Hella Vela. We've got a we've got a guy that's gonna do a show called uh, First Three, where mm -hmm. he enter, where he reviews the first three of a bunch of Vela's, and uh, then we're gonna have. Uh, one guy on here, his name's Andrew Hicks. He's going to do a segment and shout out a bunch of Bellas because I have to cut you guys off on these uh, lawless interviews where these sons of bitches would be like, you know, four or five hours long. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, my. <laughs> I won't, I wouldn't be allowed to do anything like this if, uh, if I was just talking about Bellas with people because. I'd be up here four or five hours not doing any writing and my significant other would just be like, okay, you don't spend any time with me anymore. We'll oh, all yeah, you do is no. talk Bellas no. and write Bellas. That's right. That's right. If she's, if, if you, you know, she might just resort to putting like a keyboard on her boobs or something so that she can get a little attention from you. <laughs> <laughs> that or she's breaking the computer and then I'm just going to be sad. So let's, let's not go that way. <laughs> You're going to be relegated to a big legal pad. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So I've got your shout outs. The last question here before we say goodbye is I always put links to whatever you've got out there that can be gotten in the mm -hmm. description of this video along with your shout outs that follow uh what do you have to say to the folks that will be clicking on your links and reading your stuff for the first time what would you like to say to them um thank you like honestly thank you every single view that i get on my website on any of my socials any click, any like, 
it genuinely means the world to me because the, I'm creating this for you guys. Like I, I, as much as like it fulfills me to be able to do this, I've had, I've had stories throughout my life scare the shit out of me, make me cry. Like, I'm not afraid to say that. I've, I've cried from like razor blade tears by S.A. Cosby. I, I wept at the end of that, tweeted about it, and he responded to me and told me how he still cries thinking about writing it. And just like being a part of this space where you like, where you know that like you're having an effect on someone, it, it just means the world to me. So thank you if you click on it and you enjoy it. I, I, I can't, I, I can't stress that bit enough. Um, and talk to me, engage with me. Like, if you don't like something, if you hate it, tell me. Like, I, my feelings will not be hurt. If you, if you got theories, ideas, I want to hear them. I, this is this is the space. Like, get involved and um, and be on the lookout for. Uh, my first feature length novel coming out hopefully by the end of the summer trip and it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild ride well you be sure and hit me up we'll make sure and get trip in the in the uh, description of this video as well so when people hit it they'll be able to go to your full length novel as well so folks this is aj humphreys you remember you saw him here first <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is Azriel Lawless saying goodbye for Hella Bella. Say bye, AJ. Bye, guys. Keep checking them out. She's great. Thank you. <laughs>